going to call this meeting to order. Kari, are you taking minutes for now? Okay. Can I start or do I need to wait for Tegan? Um, as long as we can take basic notes. You can go ahead and start. Okay. Um, call the meeting to order. We're going to take the um, election of new officers. We're going to take that out of order because, um, oh, for various reasons. So we're going to skip right to administrative um, items and we'll do elect officers toward the end of the meeting. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? I have an announcement. I've got a letter from the um, Division of Historic Preservation saying congratulations. They're going to be considering um, making the Maple Corner uh, um, Village a, putting it on the historic site and they're having a meeting on July 18th to consider it. So that's really exciting, and it would be good if um, one or two of us could attend. We're invited to attend. So anybody who'd like to do that, it's a Zoom meeting. Yeah, I'd, so I'd recently gone through that process for a different organization, and it, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's good to have whoever was involved in submitting the application. Um, oh, I'm sure involved, David and, but, and Tobin will be there. But, oh, okay. but I think it'd also be good if one member of the select board was there to, to sure. yeah. Yeah. keep track of what was going on. And I think I saw that it's a time that I probably came in. Uh, did they say the time? They, oh, no, that's right. They didn't they say don't. the time. They it's just, a Thursday, so it, it depends yeah, they on just the said time. At our meeting. Go, right. They just yeah. said at our meeting, so we'll have to find out when that is. Yeah. But anyway, just to let you know, that's in the works. Um, have you all had a chance to look at the minutes? Yep. Would somebody like to move minutes as written? So moved. Second. Donnie moved. Jordan seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Board orders. Um, I actually had a question. Kari. Oh. What, can I just ask this um, lift service that we paid $339 for? Is that the, the, the um, elevator here. in here? Yeah. Do we do that every year? Do well, we? that was actually um, a repair job. That was, we, we pay for an annual inspection and there were some repairs that needed to be done? Yeah, we had to call them and have a repair because it was not functioning. So it's not the same every year then? It, okay, I was just curious. And also, why was Jay Copping doing trash drop? I, what was that about? Oh, that was green Up Day. Oh, that was Green Up Day. Okay. And we had to hire tree removal for $500. Doesn't the road crew do our tree removal? That required a bucket to lift because it was a tricky oh, okay. situation. Okay. Okay. Tree leaning over Adam and Road. Okay. A few. All right. Anybody else? Any questions? Would somebody like to move the um, the board orders then? So moved. Donnie moves. Second. And Jamie seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll pat, we'll sign those. Uh, Kari, you would like to, us to authorize addition of domestic partners to the medical and dental plans? Yeah. One of our employees has requested that. I did a little research. Both our medical and uh, dental insurance carriers mm -hmm. allow it. They just want formal uh, approval of it by the select board as a uh, legitimate part of our plan. And having something in the minutes will be enough? Yeah. Okay. Then would somebody like to move? Addition of domestic partners to the employee medical and dental insurance plans. Um, sorry, one more question, I guess. Does that then need to be added to the personnel policy? policy? Yeah, yeah, that's our a plan next time the policy committee meets is to okay. take a look at that. And that 
Sounds good. Sorry, Donnie. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> okay, Donnie moved and Second. Jordan seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, the audit engagement letter. This was an audit of what? Remind me. This is our financial audit. Oh, the financial audit. Each year. You right. approved this back in November. It's for two years. And if you know, With Sullivan and Powers. Um, now that we're required to have a single audit uh, for the FEMA reimbursements, um, that was added. And so you approved it, and I have it, but we didn't. We didn't um, oh, so we don't need to authorize it. We just need to sign it. I just need to, yeah. Okay, Appreciate so you'll it. send that around. All yeah. right. And we got another beaver problem on Kent Hill Road, and you've yeah. contacted the owners, so, the landowner. Um, we've had multiple beaver issues. I think most of them are resolved. This one on Kent Hill was, you may remember, an issue last year. And last year, there was um, mm -hmm. uh, the resolution of it was to have the beaver trapped. And this year, I thought we would be playing the same playbook and um, was told by one of the potential trappers, well, you go, you know, go get the landowner permission and and um, select board approval. And so the landowners are okay with it. Um, so I'm bringing it to you. Now, as a result of it being on the agenda, I've heard from at least four residents, a couple of them are here tonight, at least, uh, uh, advocating okay. for considering alternatives, including <clears throat> contacting the state and Tyler Brown, Tyler Brown, Tyler Brown the Beaver Specialist. Yep. Um, um, so for very and, technician. And, and, and Larry has contacted Tyler, and Tyler apparently. Most of us have actually. I talked to him this morning. If, if we could take just a couple of minutes to, to just so you know the background, because this I think can be easily solved. I hope the same way it was solved in 2018 when okay. Tyler Brown came and installed a beaver baffle there, which is a device that the state used widely. They've got a map that I, I sent a link to. Probably just out of interest, you can see how how many of these things they put up around the state. And it's consistent with their um, best practices, um, which, and their best practices include um, notifying them before you do anything to the beavers. I mean, it's not a law, I guess, but I mean, we wouldn't want to be violating best practices. We didn't, <coughs> didn't need to. Um, and all this has been provided to, to Cara. He can load me down with it. Um, but this problem existed in 2018, and <coughs> Craig was more directly involved. Can I, was can I stop you just for a sec, just to make sure we got the record straight? Which four are the residents, and would you state your names so that we have there those are, in the There are only two here. Only two, okay. Yeah, so that's Craig Line and Larry yeah. Bush. And okay. there are two others uh, who can't be here tonight. Well, actually, one is a Woodbury resident. Uh, but Bill, are you I wanting to weigh in also. on this one too? Pardon me? I'd like to speak also. Please. Okay. Let's let them finish. I just wanted to be sure we had the record clear. Okay. Go ahead, Larry. Okay. Well, um, it, it's really Craig's story to tell about what happened in 2018. Um, but, the, but the bottom line is it ended up with Tyler Brown coming, having a big meeting with Craig, so there were probably 20 people around that day. Um, and he installed one of these beaver baffles, and it as far as I know, and anyone who's looked at it knows, it, it worked and dealt with the problem. Uh, then the beavers went away, and he took the took the pipe out. Uh, so the beavers are back. The pipe needs to be back, and I think we should be able to it just like the last time. Do we still have it? No, he, he repurposed it. He put it somewhere else. So uh, I don't know what the state's... I mean, that's what we would find out from him if you, you, know, if you approve having him out here. Okay. All right, Craig, you want to speak? Yeah, thank you. So in 2018, uh, driving by numerous times, and this is a site uh, at the WEC substation on Kent Hill Road where that cement bridge, it's not a culvert, but it's a bridge. It's cement blocks that were lowered into place, and the road is you know this thick over that um, on the south side of that in that wetland area is where the dam was then the town excavator had been parked for a couple weeks at the wet driveway and bucketfuls of stuff were taken out and taken out and i just became interested and 
called and said, what's up? What's going on here? And, um, you know, Alfie was trying to just take the beaver dam down. And of course, every night the beavers would replace all the material. That's what they do. And, and I told him, you are not going to win this battle. And I did some research. I called Fish and Wildlife. They put me in touch with Tyler Brown. He is the only guy doing this in the whole state, so he's busy. He lives in Springfield, but he gets all around the state. I left him a message yesterday. He's out in the field this time of year, but he called me back this morning. And he said, yeah, yeah, I remember the site, and I remember all of you. Um, I was one of several people that helped him put this in place, and it's a long, 20-foot-long like, piece of culvert that's flexible, a cage on the end of it that gets weighted down with cement blocks, and then the pipe goes up and over the beaver dam. He cut a notch in the dam to lower the water level, and this allows a constant level to be flowing in this case, over the dam, and the beavers kind of learned to live with this water level. And, and it was good for several years. He noticed Tyler, um, he couldn't remember if it was 2020 or 21 or 22, that there were no beavers there, so he took it out. Now, the town had purchased the pipe as our cost share for the project. Tyler came with the baffle constructed and, and we volunteered to help him put it in, which took a, a several hours. When I talked to him today, he said, I took it out because there were no beavers and so the beavers would, new beavers, which will always happen, there'll always be new beavers moving in because the young ones get kicked out from the parents' territory. They go overland to look for someplace new. Um, New beavers would probably just plug up the thing because they're not used to it. And so he, I don't know where he moved that baffle. Uh, he just told me he repurposed it elsewhere. But he told me this morning he'd be happy to come up and reevaluate the site and then take next steps. Trapping was discussed very briefly in 2018. The then landowners didn't want the beavers to be killed because trapping is just another word for killing the beavers, getting them out of there. Um, I, I, I know a year ago this came up. Um, I emailed Jordan back and forth with you very briefly and said, hey, I've got some information about this. I didn't hear back, and frankly, I dropped the ball on getting back to you, I think. But um, I'm a little disheartened that we went through this whole process, got a lot of input, made a decision, and yet, with no input from anybody, the road crew came upon this, a new road crew, and car is new, and the select board is all new. Nobody knows this history, so, you know, the landowners are new. They don't know about beavers or, you know. So I'm curious, did the road crew contact them, or did a select board member, and, and what were the new landowners told? Hey, we need to trap these beavers. What are they going to say? Okay, mm -hmm. I don't know how that happened. Well, but we have we talked about baffles <laughs> for that situation, and that's certainly something in every beaver-related situation. They do eventually clog the baffles too. No, um, not not they don't clog the baffles because those beavers and then new beavers move in, but. Um, it, actually, I have a beaver baffle, and we have a cage way out. You just put a cage over the end, and they can't clog it. I, I mean, it, it's, it's been there for years. And okay. the one she's referring to is probably Gray Road that is constantly being... Well, then we, yeah, changed it up and being, got wider be attended to so they couldn't clog it, and by spring mm -hmm. they figured out well, how so to Well, so those are some questions to ask. This is different. Let's, this let, is different. let me be clear. You're yeah. advocating that instead of trapping, we explore the beaver baffle yes. situation. Bill, did you want to add to this? Well, I, you know, we have problems at the sawmill with beavers as well. Mm -hmm. And they cut and put things on the dam, and it just can't happen. We're not allowed that have anything put on the dam changed. Um, we're still having the problem now, but I think they're coming from upstream where they're having the problem now. Um, I remember the beaver baffle being in there, but I also remember the water level on the beaver side being much higher than, than the outlet side. And, you know, the town has a lot of problems with the road in that area. 
and we're talking about taking their road out and putting a French mattress in there, doing all kinds of work. And that really is not going to help unless the water level is kept at the same level as it comes from the culvert. So if you do decide to explore the beaver baffle, well, I would say the ballast should make sure the water comes out of the same level that it's coming in so that we don't have the issues with the road. Okay. So what could happen here? Kari, could you, uh, as the road commissioner, meet with Tyler and just talk about it and make a report to yeah, us uh, about the, what you did? offer to come out and evaluate the situation and make a recommendation and maybe even... Including cost, please. <laughs> yeah. The cost is a, is a piece of culvert. Yeah. And his time is covered by the state and the actual mm -hmm. construction of the baffle, he came with it on a trailer. Okay. Um, so it's just it's a 20 foot piece of, I think it was eight inch pipe, but he could, he could say what he needed. Okay. So, Kari, how bad is the situation? Can we wait? I think we can wait. We can wait. Mm -hmm. Okay. Folks, what do you want to do? You want to wait and hear, wait for Tyler's report or do you want to go ahead and... I would, support, I would support waiting and meeting with Tyler, and if you keep me up to date on when that is, I'd be interested in joining down there. Yeah, and I, I'm, as far as cost go, I'm, I'm kind of curious to know that there's obviously components of the beaver baffle, and I am familiar with them, and I am familiar with plenty of beaver mitigation efforts. Um, uh, It'd be it'd be interesting to to know like what what the costs are associated with the the culvert um, and and the baffle itself. I mean, it, if there's infrastructure that can stay and the baffle can be moved around as needed, um, uh, that that seems like a pretty pretty efficient way of approaching it. If I think we all can probably agree that these are habitual areas that have kind of a recurring uh, recurring issue every uh, every couple of years, uh, kind of best case scenario. Um, so if we need to revisit putting a baffle in somewhere, making that as efficient as possible is worth considering. Donnie, Ann, you okay sure. with waiting? Or would you rather not? Mm -hmm. no, it's fine. Okay, with waiting. So we'll get a report in whenever, um, maybe, maybe at the next meeting. Just one quick question about the cost of trapping. How much did it cost the town to hire the trapper? And when was that done? When did he trap? I would have to look back to see what that cost know. last year. That was a year ago. Yeah, I don't know. Thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, put that one aside then and revisit later. Thanks for bringing that in to us. All right, um, as some of you will remember, we got a notice of violation of the open meeting law um, at two meetings ago, I think, to which we responded. We've now gotten further notice um, requesting um, that we revisit. We have studied it. I'm just going to read what we're going to, what our response is without reading all the lead in, reviewing what happened. Um, you guys have had a chance to look at this. Are you okay with this as written? Okay. So I'm just going to read the last paragraph, uh, and then we're going to take some action. In regard to the allegation of further violation, the board agree. Oh, let me back up so you all know what I'm talking about. We said that there was no violation of the open meeting law, except that we had, when we went into executive session, we had gone in to consider whether to make the um, employee buyout that we'd given to the road crew where they can buy out their, um, they can pay for their, they get paid instead of having medical insurance. There was one employee who's not a road crew member who was not covered by that. Um, we felt that because she, and she asked that um, she be given the same uh, deal as the road crew and that it be retroactive to when the road crew got it. Because there was only one person involved, we decided to go into executive session. We felt that it was her right to privacy. It was pointed out by Ms. Helling, who alleges um, violation of the open meeting law, that in fact that was a policy decision that should have been made in open meeting. Yes, in retrospect, we agree. If it had been three or four employees, we certainly would have done it as a policy decision in the open meeting. So I won't even read this to you. That's what this says, and we are now going to cure the violation of the open meeting law 
by stating that um, we believe that Barbara, it's Barbara who uh, is in this situation, that it would be fair that Barbara get the same deal as the road crew uh, and that we would give her the buyout and we're now going to ratify that decision in open meeting. Would somebody like to move that our remaining employee who did not get the buyout gets the buyout retroactive to last July 1st? So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Is that something I need to pay attention to? I can't monitor work. We're just running this in through my computer. Okay. We'll, we won't be able to see anybody. But so, uh, work is waiting to be let into the Zoom meeting. Yeah. I just let them in. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. So does that mean Deacon is on and she's taking minutes now? Um, she's not in yet. Okay. I'll, I'll keep it up. Thanks. Are you taking minutes, Barbara? I thought I'm Kari. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think good. Kari's got notes too. Deacon, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Thank you. We're, we're doing administrative items and we're just at the very last one. Um, just, okay. just announcing that we will have a joint meeting with the East Montpelier Select Board and the Montpelier Fire Department on June 17th to discuss um, some changes to the um, interlocal agreement. Um, also, Barbara tells us there's a meeting of the Woodbury Fire Department next Tuesday at 6.30, which I will try to attend, and you usually try to go to those. And just to let you know, that's happening. Okay. All right, we've reached finally public comment. Would anybody like to comment on anything that is not an agenda item? Okay. We'll move on to potential violation of the protective dog order. I do not see Buffy here. Was oh, she's she... on the Zoom. Okay. Um, and, uh, Buffy, can you hear us? I can. Good afternoon, guys. There you go. Hey, hey, Buffy. Hey. Um, so there was another incident with the, uh, the dogs across the street here in which one of the dogs was loose and... Um, Buffy, would you like to talk about what your recommendation is for response to that incident? Well, my recommendation would be, I know you guys have been working with her, I think um, she might need a little bit of a different approach on how to help her out to keep them home. Um, I think she really wanted to prove that the dog in question doesn't isn't necessarily as aggressive as she was taking it. Not, not that she's not questioning what had happened by any means, just that she was hoping to prove that after a year that the dog was not. Um, the dog, you know, did get loose. Um, <clears throat> and she was more than willing to work on uh, putting it into a training class. Um, maybe putting a backup latch to her gate so that when the when the ground shifts due to the freeze and the thaw that the, the gate couldn't be pushed on. Um, she had talked about putting in another backup fencing so that even if they made it through that gate and made it through that second latch that they couldn't go off the property. Um, I think if we get her to do that, I think as long as she understands written in stone that it's doesn't matter that the dog just needs to stay home and stay on her property. So have you seen the um, agreement? We had a year ago issued a uh, protective order because the dogs were loose and alleged to have bitten someone. Yes. Um, yeah, I and, have seen that. Okay. Um, and you folks have all seen it, right? Um, are some of you here because of that? Would you like me to read what this amendment would state, or is this? 
not why anybody's here. Okay. In that case, it essentially does what Buffy um, is suggesting. Um, and it suggests uh, this would be an agreement that would be signed by us and by Elsa, the dog owner. So it would become an amendment to that protective order. All right. Have I explained that well enough? Any uh, questions? Go ahead. Yeah. So I, I guess uh, to Two things. One, a little further uh, clarification. We, after kind of reviewing reviewing the situation, we were uh, we were uh, struggling with um, uh, the conflict of wanting to uh, wanting to document uh, a, a second incident um, uh, relative to the original protective order because it, it was in part uh, the same dog that was involved, um, but also recognizing. Uh, trying to recognize the recommendation from Buffy, our new animal control officer, um, who was uh, who was feeling that uh, the the dog owner w was participating in in trying to seek resolution um, and and trying to maintain uh, kind of a level of cooperation without uh, without pursuing kind of punitive. Um, Actions and so one of the other things that we recognized is that we were kind of the town through its protective order um, uh, Did not have a lot of leeway and so we kind of needed to fix a few problems um, and so at the end of our Last meeting there was a lot of debate. We decided um, to uh, take an action to give the direction to Buffy to issue a uh, a, a citation uh, without uh, without uh, a Two. fine, uh, essentially, um, and now since then we have further kind of discussed our options relative to entering into agreement that kind of solves all of our problems. Um, and so I think uh, what we need to do, I guess, is rescind our previous uh, directive to Buffy to issue a citation with the agreement to accept this this agreement modifying the protective order and, and specifying some of the corrective actions that we'd like to see the dog owner continue to pursue in cooperation with Buffy. Is that a fair? Yeah. In fact, I'll take that as a motion. Yes. A motion <laughs> Everybody feel like that was articulate <laughs> enough to uh, accept that as a motion? Uh, uh, well, the motion would be to rescind <laughs> the, the order that we made at the last meeting and to authorize the chair of the select board to sign this uh, amendment to the order. Okay. Everybody clear? So Jordan's moved. I'll second. And Donnie has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank and you. thank you, uh, Buffy, for your work on this particular yes, thing. Yes, thanks, Buffy. Not a problem. <laughs> I think that um, we'll be okay moving forward. We'll get her to keep them home and keep everybody, keep the dog safe and not run into other issues with her dogs. Good work. Thank you. Good service to the town. Okay. Curtis Pond Dam. Jamie, why don't you take this one? So, here we are. Um, Kari and I met with Larry, who's here, um, uh, who's the contractor, um, and with Michael Hildebrandt of uh, DNK last week, um, and went over a bunch of final details on the contract. Um, we have, there's two separate contracts. There's the building contract with Larry, um, and then we have a construction oversight contract with Michael. Um, so I think you've all seen the updated sources and uses um, budget and the draft contract. The contracts have both been reviewed um, by our attorneys who did not have any comment or requested changes. Um, and Michael dropped off to do me today the actual final contracts ready for our signatures. Um, I don't think we budgeted enough time for what <laughs> That's <laughs> only one of them. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Um, 
so the the funding the budget is is where it is at a future meeting probably the next meeting um, we'll go through the logistics of transferring the money from the CPA and the community center to the town um, but the the funds are all in their account the um, loan documents between the CPA and the um, folks loaning them money have been signed and so that money will go to the CPA and then be transferred to the town with the rest of the CPA donation money. Um, what was the final bid, Jamie? Uh, the final agreement agreed? The, co price. the, the con construction contract is, do you have that million, open, Kari? Just barely over one million, yeah. Okay. And we have, we had expected it to be a little <clears throat> less than that, but you fundraised. Yeah, so it still leaves the total budget um, at 1.2 million with just uh, like about a 1% contingency, which we recognize as a little low. Um, but we're confident that if if it goes over that one percent contingency, we'll be able to fundraise a little bit more. In fact, you've committed to it. Yeah. Right. I mean, do you guys understand? I know you guys are the ones who are most concerned. And are you? I'm good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Any questions, concerns, thoughts? Tell us about dates. So the current plan, and Larry, correct me if anything's changed since we spoke, but I believe uh, Larry will be bringing equipment on site around June 17th. Uh, one of the first things that'll happen is they'll build a temporary construction fence around the, basically the southwest corner of the Blue Barn property. Um, so from the southwest corner of the barn, straight to Camp Road, and then straight to the tree line and back to Camp Road. Um, and that is where they'll start, probably soon after the 17th, dumping sand and equipment and materials. Um, and it'll be a couple weeks of, of site work and then off a few days for the 4th of July. And in the water, building the coffer dam probably the Monday after 4th of July. That. Yeah. Um, there's a few more pieces in the works between now and then. I'm working with WEC um, to get the, the power lines um, up. They're sagging the, the lowest utility line uh, right along the shore of the pond there is only nine feet off the ground, which is nowhere near adequate to get excavators with big loads under. Um, so we're working with WEC to develop a plan to have the lines raised uh, in time for construction to start. And that's on track. Questions? Uh, seems like an important detail is the water level during construction, which uh, personally I was under some notion that it was going to be fairly low, but you had clarified that uh, it, it's really just the seasonal low water mark um, that is otherwise normal to the normal to the pond. So I think for anybody thinking about what their summer looks like, at least they can probably visualize what that is yeah. um, if and, they're familiar with the pond. And it's quite low right now. Um, but it'll it'll probably be a little lower than it is now, but certainly, you know, enough water that people will be able to use their docks in the swim area and so use you know, the, the pond. The level of water in September, a couple of years back, and that's the benchmark they had for us to keep the water at. Yeah. Well, I don't know exactly what level it is right now. It's, I mean, there's water going over the spillway now, and I know, Frequently in September, there's not water going over the spillway. So it will be, you know, at least six or eight inches lower than now, probably, but, but 
not more than that. It, it won't interfere with the swim lessons? I don't think so. The, I, I contacted the committee and, um, and he didn't think so. He said they're used to pools like that. Yeah, it, it fluctuates and the way the swim area is, you know, if the water's a little further out, there's still plenty of sand to, mm -hmm. to do swim lessons. <clears throat> and construction will last probably till early October, something like yeah, that. It should be pretty much all done, tents purchased by 1st of October, and then probably some clean up stuff and de demobilize and stuff. We had talked about one point, uh, at one point, about taking a chunk of it and making it next year so that we still had a chance of getting the federal earmark money. Did we not, are we not unable to do that? The, more information to come on that. So um, I met with Stephanie Smith last week of FEMA, who is the one who sort of walks us through the application process. She was very clear that if we build the dam this year, the congressionally directed spending is of no use to us and we cannot use it. Um, the, the application process just released, I think, yesterday, and we have 30 days to complete the application. Um, I emailed, texted back and forth a bit with my contact at Sanders office, just saying, do you have any reason to hope that you could sway FEMA? Mm -hmm. um, and she said, possibly. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm, I'll circle back with her tonight and trying to get a meeting with Sanders' office and FEMA for the next day or two, because if we're gonna do the application, it's a very time-consuming and complex application. Um, and we only have a 30-day window, so we have to um, jump right on that. And our, our grant writer, Meredith Do Dolan, I think, um, who's helped us with some of the grants, and we had received a grant that pays her to help us with the grants. Um, she's looking into getting that grant expanded a little bit so that we can continue paying her to help us through the FEMA application if this meeting with Sanders' office and FEMA lays out a path that that would be helpful. Anybody, questions? Okay, then um, would somebody like to vote to authorize us to sign the contract? I mean, move to authorize us mm -hmm. to sign the contract. Do we all need to sign there's, a card? There's two contracts for the construction and engineering. Yeah. Okay. So do you, do we need to take them one at a time? You could do one also. Okay. Tonight, so. Do we all need to sign, or do we need to authorize? Everyone needs one one signature. Why don't we authorize the chair of the board, or or does it should it be Jamie as our representative? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's authorize chair of the board. Yeah. Um, would somebody like to move authorizing chair of the board to sign the engineering and the, um, the building construction. Con construction contract? So moved. Jordan has moved. Second. And Donnie has seconded. Any further discussion? Anybody? All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Wow. Yeah. And somebody sneaked into the, the, the agenda here. Barbara, was this you? Discuss a brown a groundbreaking <laughs> ceremony. Oh, this okay. <laughs> so, uh, so that's actually something that came up in our meeting with Michael and Larry. Um, and they're down to help. And Michael has, you know, big ribbons and big scissors or whatever. <laughs> um, so one, once and equipment shovels, is on site. Right. Once equipment is on site. I don't know on why on we're going to use shovels if there's going to be excavators on <laughs> right, site. Right, right. right. It's uh, a picture. You put it in the town report. <laughs> right. And I thought it would just be nice to do a, a celebration and official groundbreaking and invite some of the press that's done stories on the dam over the years and 
Yeah. And, Long back once we go. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll work with Larry and Michael and. Do you have Harry a date in mind? No, I don't. Know. We wanted to. Uh, really yeah. Or get working, that's what it makes sense. Right. Late June. Okay. Uh, we'll do a poll. You work on uh, that. Yeah, I'll be out of. Uh, you, you'll be out of state, and I'll be out of state. By well, you, you're leaving. I, I'm back. June twelfth ish. I'll be or, back on the twenty sixth. Oh, yeah. on the twenty sixth. I'm leaving. I think the twenty sixth. So. Um, Where are you might, back? Uh, the end of June. Yeah, that's pretty close to the end of June. Uh, I, I might have that backwards. So, so I'll be gone the 20th to 28th ish, 27th ish. Uh, so we could do that last weekend or the first weekend of July, I guess. Okay. Is, is that something we usually you'd want to have done, Larry? and? Like while you guys are there during the day, during the week, or it's better to be out of your hair and do it on a weekend or an evening? Probably be maybe. better if we did it before we start get disrupting things too much. Right. <laughs> you know, we do it the week before the first July or something like that, any time really. Okay. Okay. Uh, Colleen? How about making it so, like celestial and doing it on the solstice? On the 21st? Mm -hmm. Longest day of the year. Okay. I'll be gone. Yeah. Well, you'll miss, yeah. two, you'll miss two of us, but I, I think it's more important that the Curtis Pond Dam Association folks be there than that we be there. So. All right, we'll figure that out. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Oh, and some of you who should be here are not here, like Marge and Mark and no, some of the other folks people, who worked so hard on it. it. Yeah, but congratulations. It's been a long... Can I say something? Please. I yeah. I just, I just want to thank everybody for, you know, we've been here for 30 years. And this, this project literally started the first yeah. summer we were there. We marched in the uh, Mount Pelia Parade with a banner and saved the dam. And um, so I just want to thank everybody for kind of just sticking with it. You know, previous board members, present ones, you know, it's a long, tedious pro pro process, but uh, I think uh, in the long run, the future generations are really going to appreciate what we've all done. And, and then Jamie for, Jamie's the straw that stirs a drink. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks, thanks for everyone for just hanging in there. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we're going to move on to the town plan now. Um, so, are some of you leave? Yeah. Why don't I give you just a sec to to file out? Okay, yeah, Jared, come on up, at least to the front row. Did you not bring any other members with you? Sorry. You didn't bring any other members? Not tonight. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, Barbara, could you move them out? Um, I would, okay. Possible to have this um, has all in that case, I'd better sign. We just left a chair. All right, sure. Um, do you have, or does Kari have it? I have it. Excuse us, because Larry wants to take a signed copy with him, and we offer him the chair. So I guess that's me at the moment. <laughs> So I will just sign it so Larry can take it with him. It's a couple of places. 
<laughs> Just a couple to three binders. There's a lot of little markers there. Yeah. Did you read the whole thing? Uh, no. Just a cover. Does, does anybody have Great. There's a lot of designs back, like the whole back half of it. I, I read a lot of it the first time. Yeah. This time I just read the parts you recommended looking through. Um, <laughs> he, he marked the pages. He did mark the pages. <laughs> so. Jordan, maybe while I'm doing this, do you just want to talk about what's going on with the town plan and why yeah, we're sure. having this meeting? Yeah, sure. I think that's what great. Is that meeting that we yep. Um, so, uh, the Planning Commission is working through the process of, uh, of, of revising the town plan or updating the town plan uh, fairly holistically. Um, and so, last week, uh, Ann and I uh, met with uh, um, a couple of other members of the uh, kind of leadership team for the uh, Planning Commission to kind of discuss what what would be a kind of symbiotic uh, process for working through that update where they could feel like they were taking a strategic, uh, a strategic and inclusive approach uh, to working through those revisions and updates um, with the with the select board and the community um, so that you know they felt like they could be working through that process in a way that by the time uh, an end product is is done that uh, nobody felt like they were caught off guard or didn't have the opportunity to provide direction at a time that was pertinent and so uh, what we kind of settled on um, was to uh, take uh, an incremental approach so the select board uh, for the next few months through this process is going to commit to having at least 20 minutes, um, maybe sometimes more depending on uh, the number of uh, subjects that we'll be covering, um, but basically putting it as a standing agenda item um, uh, for, for the next few meetings um, so that uh, while the planning commission is working through the incremental segments of the town plan, we can we can kind of go over those uh, go over those segments together, um, and that kind of gives a double opportunity for the planning commission commission to do its work during their meetings, um, but then also to review uh, those recommended changes uh, in in our open meetings, um, and I think that's great. And so uh, Jared uh, is here to uh, share kind of the. Uh, the kind of draft vision um, for what what they're feeling their charge is um, for uh, going through the review and editing process, um, and then also uh, the uh, first couple of segments, the first one being uh, economic development, um, and that's kind of where we're at. And um, vision. We're going to talk about vision first, aren't we? I said vision. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. It's okay. Yeah, so uh, quickly, the process we came up with was um, we broke the town plans into sections. Well, it's broken into sections. And um, we sort of put responsibility for each section on different members of the, of the commission to sort of take the lead on rewriting. And our goal was to look at at least two every month, um, which would get us through to look at each one and hopefully get to a time in the end of the year where we give you enough time to review a final uh, draft of it. And the way we're doing it, though, is two a month, because we have two meetings, so every month we'll have two sections that we look at. What we do is we look at it at one meeting. At that meeting, we sort of take comments and do that from within and whoever shows up. And then we post those to the website with the edits and the changes for public comment. So the public can then have some input about it as well, and then bring it back and sort of not finalize it, but sort of have a, okay, here's a pretty good now draft, um, which is then hopefully what you all will see each time. It's, one, it's gone through planning commission technically twice and public comment, I guess technically twice, um, so that when you see it, it's kind of been vetted and worked through and that you can then just give us comments from that. Really what we're looking for is, as we started this, we started in January, and as we started, um, we realized that the vision was only so much 
of what we were talking about and not necessarily select board and everyone else. And so it was kind of hard for us to start to dive into these sections and put concrete details in the sections without necessarily understanding what the town vision should be, right? And what, what the planning commission and select board and what it is we really want out of that town plan. So um, that's where we started with the vision. We've gone through, I think I sent historic resources and economic development. I believe that's what I said. So those are the ones that we've, we've been through. Um, we've also been through transportation and demographics, but wasn't going to give you those yet. Um, and so I think it's best that we, we're able to come to you guys and just ask for right input, thoughts, um, how we can make it work. And I think that the good place to start is that vision document. I think um, better understanding the town vision will help us draw up a town plan. And what we came up with from our meeting when Ann and, and Jordan and we met was one simplification. Um, hundreds of pages in a document is probably not the most accessible to people. Um, most people will not read through hundreds of pages of documents. Um, and so simplification. Um, and then just aligning the priorities beforehand. Again, there's no reason for us to write an entire plan only to give it to you. And then you go, well, that's no, what, what is this? Like, what is this part? Like, why is that even here? And so hopefully we can go through this step-by-step -step process. We work on it. You get input, public gets input, and we can get to a point where at the end it's just polishing and cleanup as opposed to a here's a hundred page document. Will you all read through this and tell us everything now we need to change? <laughs> right? So that's where we're at. I think for our purposes, the vision is the best place to start. Um, so the copy of the vision you got was just rewritten from the previous town plans. It's lofty, it's got a lot in it. And it's a really big vision. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that does make it hard when you go to write these sections of the plan to go, okay, transportation, and look at all these vision goals, <laughs> right? And so um, anything we can get to, to just focus in on what the vision should be, um, I think is, is where we would, we would welcome your input. All right. Bill, yeah. Are any of these draft documents available on the town website? Yes. Okay. Every, all of them that we've been through are available with the comments and the edits on the on the town. If you go to the section with the town plan, it's there. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. Let's take a look at the draft vision. Anybody? All right. Well, I'll start. Mm -hmm. um, I noticed that you've got ten visions. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking along the lines you're thinking of. I'm thinking this plan is, the life of the plan is five years, right? Eight. Is it eight? It okay. Is eight years, yeah. I'm wondering if we don't want to focus on a couple mm -hmm. and say in the next eight years mm -hmm. we commit to working on these three items, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and these are the things that are going to guide most of our policies, that this is where we want to put our energy, the mm -hmm. kinds of grants we want to go at, and so right. on. Um, and I picked my three favorite ones, okay. <laughs> but I don't, which I can do to get the discussion going. Sure. I like your first one, okay. meet diverse housing needs through strategic zoning, innovative architectural and landscape design, village planning, collaborative efforts. I also might add to that and looking at infrastructure, opportunities right. to provide infrastructure to create more dense housing. Okay. Um, I would also choose the last one. Okay. Childcare. I don't. Uh -huh. I don't know that I'd necessarily say birth through high school, but I think for the younger children in particular, I think the town. I'd okay. like. I would like to see the town look at creating childcare, certainly for up to preschool and, and right. school opportunities okay. and after school for the very younger children. Let me see, my third one was, oh, it was actually an amalgamation of the energy ones. Okay. Where you, you have several energy ones, yes. um, like enhancing opportunities for active transportation, encouraging energy efficient buildings, and there was another one in there somewhere. But I would say thinking about um, 
reducing our carbon footprint and making ourselves more climate resilient. So that, that's what I've been thinking about. I'd love to hear what the rest of you think, and maybe your choices, if you had to choose a few, would be different. I'm a fan of the championing food security and sustainability. Okay. And I'll say um, something we've talked about too is that you know the previous town plan. What it tried to do is every section has like a narrative, right? What it is, and then these action steps, and that's a whole other thing. We're, we're talking about the different action steps, but I think a lot of what makes the, the plan longer is that each time it tries to weave together everything, right? Like economic development is so much about transportation and housing and child, like it all is. We could probably shorten those down by making the vision be that weave together. And then, you know, it's sort of right out front in the beginning that these are the things that we, we're prioritizing. And so we don't necessarily have to spend three more paragraphs in each section going, well, this is how it's attached to transport. Well, it all is because it's in the vision. So that's why I appreciate it. So food security and sustainability. I can go. I have the same sort of thought. And um, I actually thought, you know, prioritization would be good with the, the, those, that list of bullets, you know, maybe right. not remove the others, but right. somehow designate the other ones as the top priorities because one of the ways I see this plan having the most influence is the select board as sort of sort of the through line and the and the and the the um, you know in charge of the budgeting and, and that sort of thing and deployment of resources. Re re looking at the plan again and again each year and saying, okay, what are we going to focus on this year? Not not just the select board, the right. staff as well. But anyway, the, the three that jump out at me are. Um, the services that we provide, and mainly I'm thinking of um, or roads and emergency services, but okay. also the infrastructure and the support staff. So all of that is sort of like a, a business plan and a capital plan, mm -hmm. and, a, and a you know, a, right. you know how we make town government function. Right. Um, then this is this is a this is a broad one, but I'm trying to capture a lot in here. Encouraging mm -hmm. development that conserve, conserves and honors our rural character historic legacy. That balance that we all want to have, I think. Um, and then for a third one, I, I, I thought, and I see this already, but I see this as a, a value of fostering broad participation in town functions, whether that's governance or the enrichment activities that we have going on. There's something about Callus that wants more people involved. Anybody who wants to be involved ought to be. Um, of course, I have something to say because I can't not. Um, no, I think this is really, really a, a great like step towards uh, that kind of adding adding clarity, and and I really uh, do kind of appreciate what what Anne was saying. You know, and, and taking, I think it, it's pretty easy to fall into a trap with these types of documents of um, of thinking like very broad, very long term, but the reality is that you're, you're going to be revisiting it. And, and I would say my, my hope would be that it's, it's very actively revisited. That's the intent, right? It's yes. supposed to be a guiding document to not only the, the select board and, and, and its actions uh, and policy, but you know, also it, it can be the guiding document for, uh, for the DRB when interpreting particular circumstances and applications um, in, in their purview. Um, and um, so I, I, I kind of support the idea of trying to zone, like zero in on, on four to five of these and, and um, refining that language uh, a little bit. I, I, I'm on, I, I, for the first one with the uh, meeting diverse housing needs. I think that's a great uh, statement. I also agree with uh, offering comprehensive child care mm -hmm. um, uh, and support all of the kind of pursuits for, for energy and, and kind of environmental conservation. 
where I still get hung up sometimes is uh, where where this gets too specific in the goals or the directive to consider all of those things simultaneously. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I guess that's more of like a, a stylistic <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. input, but like, I, I see the role of, of this board and, and the subcommittees as facilitating that influence and change in the community, like providing the opportunity for it, but, uh, but it becomes very cumbersome, I think, to think about every one of those every time mm -hmm. there's going to be a decision. You know, so um, uh, how do we uh, strive for, or, or what, what, what are the actions associated with trying to reach a 60% of residents utilizing <laughs> renewable energy systems? That's, um, that's a really specific target, and and what are the action steps that f follow it. Um, so it just kind of makes me a, a little concerned about every opportunity and decision being right. um, being brought up as equal in our opportunity to pursue that. And I think the reality is that not every opportunity is the, is the right one for pursuing that necessarily, relative to maybe some of these other targets. Um, um, and that, I guess I'll leave it at that. Otherwise, it's just going to be just more of a dialogue and soapbox. But um, and I'll try not to do that. But no, and I think I think you're right. That I mean, the, if, especially the vision. The vision needs to be the broad, right? Like overarching manifesto of what the, the town plan is. We can get into specifics, however specific we think we need to be within the other sections. But yeah. I agree. So that the level of values. Right. Not mm -hmm. metrics and targets. <laughs> right. And so that way, as we write those other sections, you know, in my head, you, in any organization, you have a vision, and then when you're planning everything else out, does it align with that? If it doesn't, it goes. Right? If it does, it stays, or you add in things that, that fit that. And I think it's hard when we have a, a big, long list of things that we envision, and it, it just leads to, you know, it makes the document, again, inaccessible, um, but it also makes it hard to work with. Um, one of the things we found was that if you go in the town plan from last time, there are tables after each one of action steps, who's responsible and by what date. That's, that, that is probably not tenable. We can't evaluate how we did that. Um, there's already a timeline because the town plan has a life. So everything we're talking about would be within that time frame of the town plan. And so that's where we can simplify as well. I mean, we are looking at, luckily we have two lawyers on planning commission. So we're, we're, we're trying to make sure that statutorily that we have what we have to have. Because it is laid out in statute, right, like what it's supposed to be. And so we just want to make sure we do that as well. But if we're not beholden to a table, I think it's best to also, within each section, go, here's three things, or whatever number we want to come up with. This is where we're going to focus. This is where the time should be spent and our effort should be spent. Um, and so I think if our vision is the big overarching part of that, then each section breaks it down with attainable, realistic goals, and then we, we have a document that is future-looking, aspirational, but accessible, and actually something that we can build on the future with. So, like, I, I appreciate these, so. Can I just, just interrupt one second? Yeah. Thank you all for <laughs> working with me for the last couple of years. Or it's, been. <laughs> 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 it's been interesting with the flood and all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we look forward to a good project. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Larry. Thank you. Let's see what I will be in touch. Yeah. Anything else on vision? Because if not, we can do economic development if we want. Well, would, are you going to continue to work on this? Yeah, so specifically the vision one, too, we were going to um, work on it every meeting because we also thought as we looked at different sections, as we got more public mm -hmm. comment, as we got different things, that might make us go, ooh, you know, no, it should be written like this or we should include this. Mm -hmm. So the vision we will continue to work on as it goes, because we think 
you know, as we do economic development, but then we do housing, that may change. Oh no, the vision should read this. And so it will probably be the one that lives the longest right now in terms of our edits with it. I um, really, and Larry did just point out, I have not posted that one to the website, so I need to Oh, do the visual one. Yeah, I, visual. I would love to, you know, hear, have the Planning Commission discuss, too, mm -hmm. if we're going to focus in on the three or five things. What do you guys think? So should, I'll tell you what, the Planning Commission, just from conversations, it is absolutely housing. Um, but every conversation we have, it comes, it starts to go off into other things. Well, housing then is, well, wastewater issues and how should it be the density of and where and most things that we've had because we've had several public meetings and different avenues where we've gone out and asked for public input you know build them in the village centers right well that's where the most river corridor and wastewater problems are right is where people think that the most housing should come so housing is definitely one um, sustainability in general, we've had that conversation and what is sustainability? Are we talking economic? Are we talking environmental? Um, are we talking long-term, kind of what Kari just brought up? That you need people, right? You need people to serve on commissions and boards and to, to sort of step up. That's a sustainability issue as well. So I know that one, but uh, energy has come up a lot. Um, and transportation in a weird way, I'd say, comes up because it's not just roads, it's talking about, well, bikes, and it's, which then kind of leads us into recreation and, you know, how are we with bike paths? And when they repay 14, are they gonna leave enough to put a bike path on 14? Like, so I would say, um, yeah, housing, energy, sustainability, um, and, and transportation have been the ones we talk about mm -hmm. the most mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't touched on it, but um, yeah. what I think, you really led a charge in trying to get input from the community, which had started all the way back in uh, yeah. town meeting. Yes. Um, even before that. And yes. even before that, um, which, uh, which I thought was awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. Thinking about engaging input from everyone and mm -hmm. collating all of that um, to kind of inform the process and get it rolling. Yeah. Did, I'm assuming you had pretty decent, it always looked like there were a lot of uh, post-it notes going up, but. Yeah. Uh, did you feel like you were getting some pretty good input? From yeah, I mean, we got, we got, we had, so on February 18th, we had a meeting here just on this. And it was not about town plan. I mean, it was the sections, but that was where we asked people, what are your priorities? And we got a lot of input from that. Um, we were at town meeting, which we got a good, decent amount of input. Um, we were at the uh, Friends of Cala spaghetti dinner, which, strangely enough, the most input we got were from kids. <laughs> at that one. Um, and they want the rec field and they want like they want it was I mean that's just a different demographic to hear from right um, and then we continue to post these things and put them out there I, that's the one where we're not getting as much input um, is, is is putting the here's this draft if anyone has comments let us know we've gotten maybe a dozen which actually probably isn't that bad um, but we also know there's only so much we can do to gain public input. We can, sure. we can just do as much as we can and hope that people give us input. But we have gotten some that way. But, so I think we started off well getting public input. Um, and we may need to just, we talked about when we get to a halfway point, should we have another public meeting and say, here's what we've at least come up with to this point. Um, just so that people not just feel like they're being given the chance to have input, but giving the actual chance for input. Um, but you're right, that, that does help. And, there, and there's sometimes some competing interests. You know, education is a town plan one, and, and, and I was surprised at the amount it was not as down the middle as I thought when it came to, say, an issue like consolidation. I, mean, I would thought it would have been a little more balanced, and it wasn't, at least from the public input we got it. It was not. It was more leaning toward one way or another. It was consolidated, um, which I found interesting. Um, and so we do sometimes get some competing input as well. But um, I think it has helped guide us as we do this. So we've broken it down. Everybody who has a section has access to everybody's comments, but specifically to the ones they're working on. So that, you know, when Gary's working on transportation, he's got all the comments 
that come in about transportation. And so we all have those to try and build it as well. Is, is that information kind of collated and, and available uh, mm -hmm. any, like publicly, I guess? Uh, I mean, we can make it public. So we have people either email um, the, the planning commission email or a Google form. And if they email, I just put it in that Google form for them. And then I just have it in a spreadsheet. And so we can always make that available for you to see. I, uh, not, not necessarily every comment and every, right. you know, everybody's right. input, but you know, I think uh, through a process like this, um, I, I think you're, you're raising a, a pretty good and interesting point. You know, um, people's individual perspectives may be misaligned with what mm -hmm. the majority of input is. And, mm -hmm. Um, and I think uh, that's an important opportunity for reflection um, as a community. Um, and uh, if there's if there's ever time uh, to to kind of bring that all kind of to coalesce and mm -hmm. to a thirty thousand foot view, these were the right. primary issues where we saw the most feedback. You know, mm -hmm. provide some information on what the scale of that feedback is and then right. you know where 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 the feedback is falling on any particular you know we're split on these issues yeah maybe we need a lot of dialogue here yeah we're not split on these issues um right we sh should still probably have a dialogue around it but uh but this is right obviously a priority and a direction that's been, um where there's point. a lot of anything. no it's a, it's, it's a good point i think it's, it's also good when you get those um, comments that don't necessarily align with everything and can at least give us pause to go well look like to look at it right you know you only have two or three people saying this one thing and 50 are saying something else but that doesn't mean we shouldn't go okay well let's look you know can we incorporate that at all or here's why we wouldn't so again it, it's, it's not just a, a single feedback right like there's a there's a loop here that people know that we're we're listening is, is really what we want so you know um, I about 40 years ago, when we did Act 200, I was staffing the committee that did it. Mm. And I collected uh, vision statements going back years before that. Mm -hmm. And I found one thing that ran through them all, that mm -hmm. was in every single one, and that is we really like compact village centers and rural. Mm -hmm. And we like to have a border. Mm -hmm. This is the village center and mm -hmm. this is rural. And I read that in every single statement. Mm -hmm. And I think we still highly value that. But we've done a terrible job of making it happen. Yes. Um, and that's, I keep coming back to that. Mm -hmm. Is there, I mean, the, the limiting factor is often the infrastructure. Yes. OK, it's the septic. Yes. Um, and the water. But it's also because where we are already compact, we're in the flood areas. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the answer is, but I'd love to see us try to really focus on that and figure out yeah. why don't we do a better job of that and how can we? And, and, I think and that I think goes would, to the affordable housing thing. Well, right, and you would find, I think, that that's, people would still say that same thing. Mm -hmm. I think and so. And maybe, maybe in, a, in, a, in a, not exactly the same, but I think they think about it the same way. We have village centers. That's where people live and then delineate it from everything else. And we want a vibrant, like that was uh, out of our first public meeting. If I would say there was any theme, that's what it was. It was vibrant village centers. If they that's want sidewalks, want. they want general stores. Yes, they that's want what a they rec want. Center. Yeah. But the, 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 <laughs> the, the part that balances out weird with that is those are the places where at least either regulation or environment in terms of flood, it's where it's the hardest to put that. And so those two, they, can, they compete. And it's hard to find a way to, to do that. But I agree with you. I think that that's what the comments we get, people would say. I, so I, and I, I guess I can only say that this would be anecdotal input. But, you know, I think a, a part of that that is often overlooked is, um, again, I think it's really easy to say that. I think it's really easy for, for most people to recognize that that is their desire. What's really hard is finding the balance of how to pursue that. And, and I think as an individual, as a resident, as somebody who wishes to see some of that realized, you know, it, I, 
it would be interesting to have some feedback from from others who live in live and breathe that uh, stuff, uh, and even if it's at like the policy level, right. um, to kind of articulate the challenge of how do you how do you balance the pursuit of that mm -hmm. with the with the reality of having to pursue it when the opportunity arises. I mean, how do you incentivize individuals to the, the the opportunity to add housing in one of our village centers doesn't come up as frequently as the opportunity to right. mm -hmm. um, to add housing in other parts of the community yeah. and so and then how does that in, get interpreted mm -hmm. um, and what is the guidance for that interpretation because we live in a world that's gray um, we're really good at making the words that make it black and white but we're not good at interpreting the reality of the gray area where it's just like when is the opportunity to maybe add a section of sidewalk or when is the opportunity to pursue siting for like a community wastewater uh, infrastructure project mm -hmm. um, and when is or, or what are the incentives um, that we want to discuss as a community to incentivize people to pursue as opposed to restrict people from doing something in right. one area or the other, which right. is going to put us in a really sticky situation um, okay. that, uh, you know, I think we're, we're, we're living with now. Yeah. Um, no, I, I agree. You're, you're right. It's, it, and that's what's hard about a town plan, too, is that you don't want it to necessarily be black and white, but if you live too much in gray, right, and as a person who lives in gray, right. I mean, my house is yellow, but... Mm -hmm. it, but you, 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 it's a balance. We talked about this when we were. It's that balance between specificity, but freedom to be able to say, "Well, no, but that's what this means, and we want to do this." And you, you don't want to handcuff yourself too much. Like I feel like responsible parties and dates for every action step was probably handcuffing it, yeah. right? But you don't want to just say, "We want to be the coolest town ever." Like you know what I mean? Like you can't have it be that. Like that. that what does that say? Right, and so it's that finding that good middle ground, and I think if we do the vision right, we will find that. Right, we will find that good middle ground. Barbara keeps. I have, I have a question. Yes, is the plan is one of the goals of the planning commission to get more community input? As much as we can, yes. So I have a suggestion then. Please. So, working off the the theme of build a food table, and they will come. Uh, there, this is the time of year to get people to events wrapped around food. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there's the East Callis uh -huh. monthly potluck on it's either the fourth or the there. last Thursday yeah. of the month. Mm -hmm. Built-in audience right there. Mm -hmm. um, the Adamant throughout the summer, Adamant has their Friday night barbecues. Yep. Um, yeah. Maple Corner program, Maple Corner Community Center program committee has potlucks. Mm -hmm. Friends of Callis is having a barbecue at the North Callis <coughs> Memorial Hall mm -hmm. in July. So there would be right. lots of low cost, no cost way to get to the public where at places they're already going and feeling social and wanting to feel engaged. And this is the opportunity to tap into that right now without you guys having to put a lot of work into no, doing all these absolutely. events. Because these events are going on anyway. Right. No, you're, you're absolutely right. What we can do is you know, the planning commission has people that live in the different, That's right. right? And we can sort of, hey, you live at a man, so here we go. Why don't you take the lead on doing get, that? Yeah, getting, getting, asking us, right. getting us permission to have 15 minutes with Correct. everybody who's there. And so far we've done that. I mean, Friends of Callis had us, you know, the spaghetti dinner. Like, you're right. We just have to find those, go to where people are. Right. And you're yeah. right. I went to college. You say food. <laughs> you show up. Right? Like, that's how it works. Yeah. And so you go this, in this case, go to where the food is. Exactly. <laughs> right? Appreciate that, Barbara. Thank yeah. You. So I want to be sensitive to two yes. other uh, items there, but we're still on schedule, so technically. All right. Um, but so one other charge yeah. that I think I might want to add to, Please. to this vision um, is to uh, consider it's too big of a process and too difficult, you know, to, to make this probably a living, breathing, malleable document that right. gets re revised on the fly, you right. know, that, and, and that's likely not appropriate um, because that's not its intent. But um, it, it's a document that tends to get dated pretty quickly mm -hmm. in, in today's reality. Um, I think it would be interesting as the, as you're working through the individual 
sections right. to think about what might be the metrics for measurement and tracking right. progress on a particular thing. Um, we're a fairly small off community. It wouldn't be hard to say, okay, if we're, if we have uh, housing, affordable housing development aspirations, how would we look at that? How would right. we measure it? What would be considered a success? N not even maybe saying what the target should be, but hmm. what is the metric that we're going to say in two years, how are we doing? In three years, how are we doing? Or, or maybe just halfway. How are we doing halfway through this, the, the life of this plan? Um, and the same would be, I think, for conservation uh, efforts. You know, how are, how are we doing? What is the, what is the metric that, um, uh, that we want to be measuring ourselves against? Um, uh, because I think that can be pretty, pretty valuable. And hmm. frankly, I think by the, by the next time you're reviewing it in eight years, right. theoretically, that would make the, the ambitions or the directive of the next planning commission sitting down to review the plan um, pretty well informed. Um, there's no way of looking back and saying, like, how did these policies or, uh, or visions really impart the change uh, in the community? Um, I mean, I can see I can see a way where you each section is the narrative, which needs to be shorter. Just in my opinion, needs to be shorter. But you have a narrative, and you have your goals as opposed to action steps, right? Your goals here, like we want to see these things, and then even if it clearly spelled out in every section, a, a metric, a measurement, some form of how do we evaluate this, mm -hmm. right? Because I remember that was one of the first things I asked as I looked at one of those and I went, "Do we know who did that?" We couldn't, we couldn't answer the question. Like we were all like, oh, I don't know. Who, who said that that happened? There was no way to. So I, I kind of like the idea of something for everyone. Like, let's measure it by looking at this, right? Or something as, as we go. Um, that's not just good for us now, but in the future. Because then it's kind of doing what we're doing now, which is let's look at it little bits as we go. So by the time you get to the end, you don't have to rewrite the whole thing. You've been evaluating as you've gone. Mm -hmm. Right, and you, you've been watching it as you work, and you might get to a point where that goal was too lofty, or that goal is now out of reach. Like we can't do that, and now we know when we go to do it again, that's not going to be part of it, or that had an goes. adverse impact towards another one. Right, there's some like, negative externality that has come along with yes. it, or something like that. Right, I know. I, I like that. I, I don't know what we could come up with something though. I think it's how do we measure whatever our goal was here, mm -hmm. and. I like that. Appreciate that, that. That's where my mind went with it too. That <clears throat> I know you're not a big fan of tables, but I imagine a table where you had that that vision bullet. Mm -hmm. what, who are the groups or the people that are most closely be. associated with that? And then mm -hmm. what are some possible metrics? And the, that you're thinking work, yeah. that, like the select board is re revisiting the top priorities. Mm -hmm. There are these groups that are revisiting these other sub priorities or, or whatever they right. are over time because, I mean, even the second year of a plan, you can't get very specific. You're gonna to have to revisit right. it if you wanna keep right. making incremental progress. So it seems like the purpose of the plan in this regard is to, as a touchstone, to right. just keep going back and saying, all right, this is the direction we wanna head, but what specifically can, can we do in this next period? I mean, it could even be as much as, well, first of all, everyone at home, I'm not anti-table. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Not completely empty table, just not big long tables. Um, tables are the first th uh, step to, to graphs, though, and like everybody likes graphs, so you got to go. That's a fair point. You can't get the data with that. Okay, fair. Enough. Uh, not completely lost my train of thought. No. Oh no! But the metric could even be as much as whatever whatever specific metric we're looking for, and it could just be in year three of the plan, right? Evaluate X Y Z. Right, to go back. And if it's affordable housing, it could be, well, you know, how many units have been added? Right? Or, or, or how many permits have we, you know, approved for X? And we could just do that. And it could just be incremental. It could be, you know, year three, we will look and we will see by this metric. And we're, we're going to check that out. I, and I'm not against also having um, not necessarily a responsible party, but groups who could be part of that. Yeah. And maybe they're groups beyond like official government groups too. Like when you're talking about getting people involved, well, Friends of Callus is a good one about how getting people involved. So 
maybe that's a group that you work with about how to get people involved in things, right? So it doesn't have to just be, well, a commission or a committee. Right? There can be other, you know, it could be Curtis Pond Dam Association, right? Like that's, that it can be those groups. There's, it can be anybody. It's a, if we want it to be a citizen-based government, well, then it needs to be based on citizens. So finding a way to do that. So we could look at that. And I don't, I'm not fully anti tape well, I, so the one one other thing that I think is really important about having uh, having those metrics and, and having them stated is is it also for it, it, it provides a basis for um, providing a charge I think to um, to the other uh, subcommittees or groups that get formed within uh, then um, I'm going to use Larry as an example because I uh, because I I want to but uh, <laughs> and maybe that's not fair so I apologize in advance. <laughs> Um, but as truthful as there is, so you know, right. I think like for the for the conservation commission, um, if, if in working in dialogue with the conservation commission, mm -hmm. um, the 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 planning commission and the conservation say like, okay, well, how are we going to measure our success on like moving the needle for right. conservation initiatives? Let's call it you know acres, acres conserved. All right, fine. That's what our metric for success is going to be measured by. Right. So then the Conservation Commission can then go and have a conversation. It's like, okay, how are we going to move the needle on this particular thing? Are we going to try to, you know, seek funding for uh, for land procurement? Are, mm -hmm. you know, are we going to, um, you know, prioritize certain certain areas that are higher priority for conservation versus right. others? It, it really kind of focuses the efforts, uh, I think, for the for the individual committees and subcommittees to really. Um, to zero in on those metrics that have been kind of agreed on by right. by the community is like this is what we're trying to do and and mm -hmm. and even if we fall short of what what those metrics are what our expectations are we can still say well that just wasn't working that approach wasn't working right. how how can we pull more people into helping us move move forward on that and I think that that could be for uh, for uh, food food security as well and uh, and the sustainability uh, of, of uh, of those resources and mm -hmm. access to those resources. Mm -hmm. um, what's the metric and you know, what's the organization that we're going to charge with trying right. to strategize around um, moving that, that initiative forward? Um, and then we'll leave it with that. We should definitely move on to. Yes. I was gonna say what I can do is send Kari the, um, the same email and form that is just out there. And then you can always then give comments that way, because we do want to be cognizant of your time. We know it's going to be a lot. So if we can send those things to you, then you have the way to give me digital comments too in that way. But we, can, we still will do this. We might send different people at different times. You know, Gary wrote transportation, so Gary might be here that time to talk about that. But if we can get it so that you have it digitally, we can keep to that time to be right aware of all the time you're going to have to put in for everything else too. So. Um, I will get that to Carney. We have well. just spent our entire amount of time that we had allocated on the vision statement, but maybe we can okay. quickly hit the yeah. other two. Yeah, if you have something you want to, yeah. Does anybody want to have input? Let's, shall we take historic resources? Anybody have thoughts about that? Um, I have a question. Goal yeah. one. Traditional settlement patterns are no longer a criterion for good development. Is that because of the lack of density? Um, if I look back, that was a long conversation. We, <coughs> they, they went back and forth on that one. Um, it was, I think it was, and we've, we've still tried to reword that one. That was about that historic, the way you develop just a long ways. So it was like a curb cut for every house you built, right? And so traditional would be, you build a house, you build a, you know, access and a curb cut, and then an access and, this was, well, why can't it be that there's one, but it leads to three homes? Okay, right? I see. It was, yeah, it's not like, yeah, it was, traditional is, you're going along a road and you build a house over here, so you put a drive. And then okay. you build a house down here and you build a drive. It was, can we do it so that there's a drive? Mm -hmm. So there's only mm -hmm. one curb cut. And then it goes to different houses. and cluster yeah. development yes. and so on. It was sharing a, of driveways correct. and yeah, yes. I see. That's what that, that was. might be good to make that a little more clear. Yes, I, I, I would. <laughs> uh, anything else on historic resources? All right, thanks for sharing that with us. Economic development. What? Yes. 
I would just want to say I think some of the traditional also is based on that Act 250 10-acre exclusion that happened years ago. Uh, yeah. And like property got divided up into 10-acre parcels versus because it was the easiest thing to do, right? And, I, yeah. I remember that being part of the conversation as well. Yeah. yeah. That do we have to look at those kind of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've gotten a lot smarter since then. Yeah. I yeah. hope. Yeah. Economic development? I attended a discussion for economic development, and I know <laughs> I think you guys are doing great work yeah. moving, moving yeah. that forward. I think that's pretty pretty representative. Yeah, that one I would, that's the one that I was charged with writing, and that one is to me the one that's the most sort of broad, right? Like it's it's the it is it's just because it also gets into everything else. Well, economic development, transportation, childcare, education, housing. Uh, everything agriculture, everything infrastructure, it all deals with it, and it then deals with the rest of it. And so um, that that one's kind of a real big, broad. Um, the biggest comment I got, which um, if you look at it, I have to go in and edit it. Jan came back to me was the one about which village centers designated and when, and she gave me the perfect write up for it. I mean, she had dates and she had when everything was done. So I'm going to update that. Okay. Um, some of that I just don't have the historical knowledge of myself. And so um, I'm just glad that Jan cleaned it up for me. So, um, but that's, a, that's an interesting one. That was the one we had the most discussion around sustainability too, was what did it mean, right? And what, what does economic sustainability look like for a, an entire town, mm -hmm. right, for a community, so. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I like where you, you're looking at changes to encourage housing affordability, and you've got some very clear ideas about how to do that. That's yeah. That was terrific. off of Jordan's comment, and you, to be honest, uh, Jordan, you made yeah. me really think about that one, that the, the difference between affordable housing and housing affordability, and that they are two different things, and that one is narrow and one is a much more encompassing Mm -hmm. thing that we, we need to talk about it that way. That mm -hmm. It's not affordable housing, it's housing affordability, which includes affordable housing. Right. But it's not the only thing. Mm -hmm. and so I think we're going to make sure we go through and that's the language that we use. Right. Um, and the fun thing is is that Kathy Hensey, the, new, one, the newest member of the commission, um, what she does for a living is wordsmithing and like cleaning things up and taking things that are too long and putting them to... And, She's really good at it, so we're going to be able to use her talents to really word that thing together well. Mm -hmm. Because not all of us are great at it. So. Fantastic. Thank you, Jerry. So thank you. Yeah, so we'll, once a month, right? We're going to do well, one, we'll we'll do one meeting. Once a, once a month, yeah. And then we'll just, somebody will come and we'll send the stuff before. And if you want to give comments through that to keep your time down as well, we can, we can do that. So we'll see you in June. You'll see me in June. <laughs> right. Thanks, guys. Right. Well, that's like next week. So first thing. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Rudd, Commissioner, you're up next. Oh well, so there's a lot going on. I, I don't need to restate the, the memo that I did. I will update that uh, we identified a buyer for the tractor for the mower. For the mower. And as he was driving it away, it, it broke. So I mean, we'll have to see if he's still interested. He went to negotiate down the price, but uh, that's a work in progress. As are, are all of these things, really. The beaver, the beaver <coughs> issue is on the way. Um, yeah, but uh, any questions about any of the rest of it? Well, there are some things you want us to do yeah. here. Yeah, so there's two action items. The first was about the creation of the assistant road foreman position. We talked about that a little bit. I raised it right at the end of the last meeting, and I've, I've uh, worked on that a bit. Um, let me just be clear that this is intended specifically as a way to help retain Tyler Stecker, who's just you know, a unique um, person on our crew, who's an invaluable member. So trying to be responsive to that. There are some other benefits. I would say the main one is just having someone else to assume responsibility if the foreman is not available. That, you know, that makes some sense. Anyway, I've um, drafted a job description. It's acceptable to the union. Oh, it is. They've, re they've reviewed it. Yeah, they is did. Fine. Okay. We discussed having a, and I think we're in agreement, we prefer to have a six-month review 
built in with no obligation to, to continue and if it doesn't work out, other party wants to stop. Um, you know, assuming the Tyler were hired into it, right now we're just talking about creating the position, but mm -hmm. um, that, that if we wanted to end it, that he would just revert back to the number. We have that um, agreement with John as the foreman. His six month is coming up, actually. Um, mm -hmm. And then if we did this, we would post internally in keeping with the contract. We have to post for a week. That's what the contract says, so we would do that. I doubt anyone else would vote for it, but that's what we'll do. So you would like us to authorize you to create the position? And, and post for it, please. And post. Yeah. yeah. And so to clarify, is this, uh, so this is going to be a side agreement to the labor contract um, yes. that will have a built-in uh, review at six months, but then is it, in, has there been any dialogue about whether or not there's going to be any commitment to uh, formally creating this or adopting this in, in future contracts or um... we have not talked about that specifically with the foreman position it's sort of understood that we will be definitely revisiting that at what the next contract negotiation sure. but because it's not part of the agreement currently um, that's why we created that side letter um, but I think we're in agreement that that's something we want and we'll just find a way to negotiate that in with the assistant road foreman, I guess that's a good point to discuss. I, I'm sort of out of the mind as I've been thinking about this. To the extent that we are basing this on, on Tyler, maybe, maybe we should communicate that we're not necessarily going to want to communicate or continue this. And and we, maybe we will. Maybe it'll work out so great that it makes sense as our organizational structure, but. Um, we might want to give them a heads up that this is not necessarily the model we want, that they were treating this as, you know, both as a way to reward and value Tyler, but also as a way to try out this structure and see if it works for us. When you say them, who do you mean? The rest of the, the road crew? The, 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 the union? union? The, the, the union. union. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not that we, you know, we're not committing to anything, you know, when you negotiate in two, two years from now. But to give them a heads up as a courtesy that we're thinking about this one a little bit differently than we are mm -hmm. the foreman. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. And that's each Jamie Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, a, does, that's, yeah. that's kind of the, the, yeah. un, the underlining subtext for me. You know, I think if you're looking at like the responsibilities in, in this, it, these are a lot of qualities and qualifications that we would put in the, in the road foreman position. Absolutely. And, um, and uh, it's hard to remove ourselves from the reality that we're a very small road crew and to have uh, this, this number of you know, layers of formal roles within such a small organization that we have a hard time filling uh, it seems heavy <laughs> to me. Um, but you know, that, that is certainly not a, uh, a, a judgment on the qualification of, of uh, Tyler um, to right. um, to to perform to perform these tasks. I just think we kind of need to think about what the what three years out looks like and uh, and who's 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 in that role of foreman. Um, okay. But Anne, Donnie, you okay with all this? You guys know more about the road um, stuff than the rest of us. I guess I'm a little confused though. So why would necessarily be to the assistant one? I mean, I, I guess I don't. I don't. I guess I would say that I don't see the need for it. But that's me. I, I just, uh, you know, yeah. we're, we're handing out an award for a second position. Here. I mean, and I think part of it. I feel about that. I guess. Part of it is because John's the only one with the A. And so he's always out, I know. I, I mean, that's a much bigger problem than calling I, stuff. because no, Tyler, I understand Tyler that. being the assistant foreman still doesn't have an A. So no, exactly. what's but the I, difference? My understanding is John, you know, there's a fair amount of upward pressure on him to be doing all this paperwork. Because like Guthrie doesn't go out in the field. He, he does, Wait, you know, he plans things from other foremen typically have more time to be able to work on the paperwork side of things. So 
but John, because he has to haul stuff. So then he's getting back late and then he's doing paperwork and I think Tyler was intended. I think that is somewhat how this came to be. I, 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 I certainly hear, hear your concern. And it, it, it didn't occur to me to go this route, but uh, again, I think my primary concern here is hanging on to Tyler because I think he's invaluable on our crew. And, you know, well, maybe this is not necessary to retain him, but I suspect I, it's important. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly don't think that Tyler's going to go anywhere. He had a better job offer somewhere else and stay here. So I, I have a hard time believing that he's going to leave at that point. Oh, Cabot did. Cabot offered him a phenomenal job offer. So. But. Yeah. I, I guess if you're not married to it, then I guess it doesn't matter. You try it and see if it works. But I guess, uh, you know, for me, I would say. I don't see the point in it. Okay. I think it's unnecessary. All right. Well, we all agree that if we do this, it's we'll revisit, see if it, it's important. We'll revisit in six months, and then and then also let them know that you know we're not necessarily going to want to continue past time or anyway. Right. Right. And do you want to add anything or no? No. Okay. Barbara has a Oh, sorry, and so does Bill. Yeah, okay, Barbara. Um, so, is John working more overtime hours because since he's been foreman, because he's having to stay late and do paperwork? No, he, he does work some additional hours. It's, it happened mostly in the winter when he was evaluating roads. You okay, know, for Be because of, if, if him being foreman and having the added responsibility of having to do all this in paperwork and administration and so forth, if having Tyler assist with that means that we're cutting back on John's overtime hours, that would almost balance out and pay for itself. But if, if the added work of being foreman hasn't really caused John to work more overtime hours, then it is going to be an added expense to the town. There's, there's a possibility, I would say, that, that it could help to have this position in that regard, but it, it's, so, it's such early days, it's such a small sample size, yeah. it's hard for me to predict how it's actually going to play out. Mm -hmm. But it's something to watch as we go forward. And, and quite frankly, yeah. it might also help retain John longer. Right. Good point. <laughs> yeah. I think that's, that's right on. Yeah. Bill, you wanted to add something? I think my question is answered. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we need a formal vote, I guess, to authorize you to go f to to create and post the position. Yes. That's where we are. Would somebody like to move that? Uh, can I ask one more thing of before course. we do that? Of course. Um, for can offer up for consideration. I, so sharing kind of the concerns of Donnie and, and others uh, uh, about kind of the existential need. Um, what, again, I guess, what are, what are going to be the things that we're measuring um, our decision in six months against? Mm -hmm. um, and I just, I, I just want to make sure that I, maybe we don't need to define them now, but over the next, next six months, like what, what are going to be the things that we're looking toward uh, achieving with this aside from the retention of employees we're, we're talking about actually seeing some work being done and and things being addressed in a more meaningful way um and uh i just want to make sure that everybody totally fair point. on on the crew is is clear with those expectations that if we're not seeing any m mark market improvement on reaching some of these goals or covering these responsibilities, then there's going to be a real question of why, why we even have the position. Yeah. I think that's a very fair point. Rather than putting something out there that I won't stand behind later, why, why don't I bring you back in two weeks um, what, what, what we think? Yeah. And, and you can evaluate it in the context of improving the hiring. Of, of yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that, that makes sense. Yeah. I, 
I don't think it would require any substantive change to this. This yeah. no, 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 no. is right on for sure. Okay. All right, great. Good. If I followed that, we're not voting to create the position now, then? No, we, we, we are, are, but before we hire for it, um, uh, we will have yeah. okay. some guidelines from Kari Got to it. some considerations okay. from Kari. Okay. So um, right now, it's just creating the position on a temporary basis yeah. and authorizing Kari to post. Correct. And Jordan has moved that. Do we have a second? Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. All right, thank you. So um, the other one is, uh, I can't remember if this came up, I think I, think this, I, think I discussed it with Bill a few weeks ago, but um, um, I'm recommending we hire Bill Davis to be a seasonal part-time road crew member for the purposes of roadside mowing and um, that would be very valuable because you can be flexible enough to do it as the weather allows primarily mm -hmm. but also that would free up our crew to work on other projects. We, we have our mower now right? Yeah. Yeah we do. Yeah. Okay. Well, I there is that unloaded the old one yet. Yeah. So we can do it anytime. Yeah, yeah this time. That's right the yeah. time. Wonderful. Question. Um, would Bill be working closely with the guys on like which roads he's going to be mowing and when? Because I know uh, like that, that Eddie likes to have them um, yeah. mowed prior to grading tends to be helpful. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I would think that you come up with a weekly plan and if the weather supports it, we'll ask Bill to do the, whatever sections make the most sense. Okay. I just didn't know who would be coordinating it. Coordinating it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be a job. It's, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's great. Other questions? Donnie? No. No question. All right then. Does I somebody I, excuse me, I just, I'd like to be clear that I mean, if anybody in the road crew wants to know, I certainly don't want to take anybody's livelihood away. We don't so have enough people, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, the mower's been sitting for a little while, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean you've I got do, I think it'd do it some good to move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quickly. And if we hire Bill, you can start right away? Yeah. Wonderful. Well, yeah, I'm right. taking some vacation time in June. I've already planned that, but then uh, early July, but you know, mm -hmm. I'm around. Mm -hmm. I'm and it's time to I'm do it sure now. I don't know every single day, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll do my best effort. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Would somebody like to move? What do we have to move exactly? Just hiring We're Bill hiring. That we, yeah. to hire Bill Davis as a seasonal part time road crew member for the purpose of roadside mowing. I've got to say, I haven't filled out a W 9 in 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Barbara will guide you through that. <laughs> uh, so moved. Jordan has moved. I'll second. And Donnie has seconded. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You're one of us now. <laughs> okay. Um, select board rules of procedure. This is just what we were going to do um, last time. I see that they're not rewritten, re but you saw them last time. You know what it what it is. Oh, the, yeah, they were in the mid the memo, but it was the same language. That oh, they're in the memo. Yeah. yeah. All right. Which uh, it was essentially that when we come out of executive session, we'll explain our reasons. <laughs> so. Um, would somebody like to move that? So moved. Donnie's moved. Second. And Jordan's seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the rules are amended. Thank you. And you guys can put that together for us. Yeah, so did, did you bring something for them to sign? No. We'll do, do I don't, time. you have to have the document put. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, review of draft minutes, what's that about? Oh. Oh, that was just uh, that was just kind of a procedural. Uh, yeah, uh, that was the item. issue of when the draft minutes go into the formerly the Google folder and now the SharePoint folder. They're available oh, there in, as oh. a shared document. Right. So the question came up: Are people actually making changes to the mm -hmm. minutes? And if you are, then how does another select board member know that? And so maybe you looked at them and approved them in your mind, getting ready to vote to approve them, but then someone goes in and makes Someone change. else changes. That's sort of the, 
the question that came up, and so I thought we'd just raise it. And, you know, I think we discussed having a gatekeeper who would essentially be Kari, that okay. instead of actually making the changes ourselves, we write the changes to Kari. Right. And right. then Kari can let us know if there's been some changes. Barbara? Or I yeah. think the discussion was that you would just email the select board so everybody on the select board would see what your recommended changes are, and that would you'd be aware of them. Then Kari would make the changes into the document, sure. but you would at least all have seen what the recommendation changes are. So the are. question is, do you, guys, is, do you guys want to get those emails where somebody says, Gee, I recommend you put a, you know, you change this word. I, I so, and maybe we need clarification on, uh, on kind of open meeting law here, but um, this kind of, my understanding is that this kind of falls into a, a gray area where your <clears throat> changes can be coordinated through email, um, but, uh, and, and communicated, um, but they can't be substantively discussed, and then they have right. to be posted in a fashion where it's everybody's and the public are seeing uh, those, um, unless the changes are then going to be discussed and, and adopted uh, in, in the open forum. So uh, I guess we, it seems to me that we're following the process so far nobody's been discussing changes or I don't think that that's correct, et cetera, et cetera. They've been, uh, they've been pretty benign, uh, in, uh, in nature and direct in like this, this proposal. Uh, so as long as those changes are being, uh, circulated, uh, to everybody so that everybody has the opportunity to see them and, uh, has the opportunity to say, I think this needs further discussion and wait, wait for making those changes uh, in, in an open meeting. Okay. Uh, that would be most appropriate. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Kari just puts Otherwise, them in. Otherwise, you know, Kari is the only one who's making changes to, uh, to those documents uh, after, they've been, after they've been posted okay. publicly. And there hasn't been a lot of these no. changes that I know of, but um, it's just good to be clear about the process. So is that going to be the process? Yes, when I you think. you propose a change, you're going to send it to Kari to make the change, but you're also going to notify the other members. Uh, so they are aware of your. Any, any proposed change proposed that's, con change. That's, being, uh, that's being directed to Kari, you know, keep, keep the same list of distributions so that everybody sees whatever the proposed changes are. Um, and if it turns out to be controversial, we'll discuss it in, in full meeting. Yep. Um, and this last one, um, sometimes staff gets a little frustrated because they're trying to plan a meeting and people don't respond. So it's a plea to please when you get um, requests for that, would you try to respond in a timely fashion? Define timely. <laughs> well, well there was, there was discussion around that. Some of us were a few hours, so. Uh, so, is a little tough. so I, I definitely fall into that camp myself uh, relative to whatever form of communication uh, somebody is dangling in front of me at that point in time. Um, and one of the things that um, that came up was, um, uh, you know, for me personally, as an example, it, it, I look at my emails as a heart as a hierarchy of to do's uh, and um, and certainly Kari and I have gotten to the point where if there's something that I need to respond to he, he texts me uh, and and that is a indication that if I'm getting a text from Kari I need to pay attention um, and and I want to be careful not to like set that expectation for for anybody else, if that's not a form that works, but I think if there's a better uh, dialogue around like what, what's your hierarchy of communication, calling me is also, uh, is, is also fine. So I will certainly make the commitment as requested by Barbara to, to make sure that I'm keeping, uh, keeping tabs on, on reading my emails uh, as much as I can on a daily basis. But I would also say that Barbara, if, if there is something in there that you need me to respond to within 24 to 48 hours, please feel free to, uh, to call me on my cell phone. I, I know you did this last time, 
uh, and, and apologize for not responding that way. But, um, but generally speaking, <laughs> generally speaking, <laughs> calling me is a good way to get me, unless it's my mom, define, and I don't answer those phone calls. Define generally speaking. <laughs> that, um, Calling and text message, I do have my phone on me, but as I'm, have a cell phone no, no, I no. Calling is, is totally fine. Calling me from the office. No, but you, you know, can I, ask Tegan or Kari to do the texting if that's what you need to do. So. Um, yeah, I just wasn't going to call you back at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> <laughs> or at 4:30 in the morning. <laughs> okay. Those were your two options. Well, we, did, we did talk about each of us having a preferred method of communication. Like maybe it's easy for you to respond to texts. I, I'm on heavy equipment most most of the day. So I don't look at my phone very often. I get paid to do a job, so I don't really pay attention to my but, phone but as when much you, as I when you, can. When you do, what, what's your preferred method of? Every time Kyrie texts me, I usually respond within 12 hours. So texting works better with you than even Yeah, and just, I might text back at a late or early hour. Yeah. So, it's like I try not to bother people at later early hours, but that is usually my free time. Yeah. I find every, everyone by the end responds to texts. <laughs> I never Come on, Ann. And work. I'm usually like somewhere where it's email is the. Plus, it doesn't day. work most of the places <laughs> I tend to hang out. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I will say I do prefer the, you know, the record and having the email because Barbara puts time into the context and, you know, forwarding anything. And that is that is always important. I, you know, I just like having the caveat that if you don't feel like you're getting what you need from me, please, by all means, um, send it. Even if the text says, Jordan, read that email um, like that's ridiculous. I know. And I'm sorry, but uh, but it does work. <laughs> um, I've never done this, but I get them, so I think it's possible. I think you can send an email to a cell phone number through an iPhone, and it, to an iPhone, and it'll come through as a text message. I, I I have a number of people who contact me that way, and I've never fully understood it, and I've never done it myself. But I know I get them, so it but might probably, be worth trying. It probably has to be a phone that does it, though. No, oh, you can so. do it. No, I'm saying like Barbara might be right, able to well, just shoot an email, right? So I to think a I think what we're number. getting out of this is texting works better for most people, um, and maybe we can figure. You guys can talk about it and figure yeah. something out. But for me, email works best. I'm really sorry. <laughs> okay, have we finished with that one? The calendar. Barbara put together this wonderful calendar um, showing everything that uh, we're doing. What was what were we supposed to consider about it? Well, just sort of in general, if you have any general feedback or specific points, we'd love to have it as a draft. It will, it will continue to evolve. I think it'll be a work in progress. But I think it's going to be particularly helpful as we get into the budgeting season and, and as you get into wanting to schedule different committees or commissions or groups to, mm -hmm. to come and speak with you mm -hmm. and just calibrating all that out. Okay. Yeah, okay. and I'd say, Barbara, I've been uh, to the point that you, you sent a, a concise email of what uh, you're looking for some feedback on, and I've been kind of ruminating on that a little bit. Um, uh, mostly how, how to kind of stagger out um, meetings with different committees and commissions throughout the year uh, in a way that is relevant to the work that they're doing throughout the year or maybe the appointment schedule um, uh, worth considering. But um, anyway, so I'll, I'll keep working on sussing that out. And, um, sure. I, I would just make one suggestion that like with road things, bump it up earlier because all of the grants come open like September, October. Okay. Um, so it would behoove. Like what are you thinking? So, well, like, so it says discuss it mid-October, but um, okay. by being able to like at the August maybe. Okay. So, you know, what should we tackle next year or the year after? What grants, you know, especially for some of the large culverts or the ash trees or whatever, kind of having that queued up so that when they open up, that can be the focus to 
to knock those out because there's a lot of funding opportunities, but they all okay. come right in the fall. Okay. And do we, to the extent you know your vacation calendars, it's good to put those in too. It helps yeah, us let, plan. Yeah, let us know. If this helps, you know, anticipate when you're going to be on vacation, let us know if you're going to be missing one. Mm -hmm. I have one specific um, question that relates to that. So last time we said we weren't going to meet on August 12th. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be away on the 26th of August. So I wondered if there was interest in making the sole August meeting the 19th, which would be better for payables a little bit as well. I know that conflicts with AM's schedule. I think away. you can manage without me. <laughs> I, I think that sounds pretty good uh, to me. I think it's a pretty late month anyway. Yeah. Okay to make that change then? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any? Nobody? I, I 19. Say the date again. The, the 19. 19. Okay. That would be the only August <clears throat> meeting. Works for me. I have some stylistic feedback, but I, maybe I'll share that, that with you. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and, in a, in and an email or a text? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a text. I, I will. <laughs> just looking at the calendar, there's not one. July 29th. So that means we go one, two, three. We go a whole month without a meeting. Oh. Which feels a little long. That sounds great. Just yeah, because there's do. five Mondays in July or maybe? Well, it's three weeks. Yeah. Right? The 29th is a meeting? Oh, no, it's no, the 22nd. It's the 22nd. Right. It is a month. Okay. So it's a full four weeks. Yeah. Well, so we could do something else. Um, we're not married to the 12th. The issue with the 12th was the setting day, us the forever. next day is the election. Right. Mm -hmm. So we could we could, we could do the like fifth Wednesday or we Thursday could, that week, instead. or the fifth. Or we could do the fifth because that's two weeks after the last meeting. Right. That might be a little it's, easier. I'm not. So, so you, um, you guys can meet on the 12th. We just wanted to consider it. Um, you could either. If, if you're willing to help us stay after the select board meeting and set up this room for the election, <laughs> that would be fine. Or you could hold the meeting on a different site. We could shoot for a very short meeting and do it on Zoom. Looking at the fit, though. Let's see. Or upstairs. Oh, yeah. In the summer. I'm sorry, what did you say? Upstairs. upstairs. Oh, upstairs. Oh, that's right. I, I don't have a strong opinion. Um, so. It does seem like we, we've never, I can't imagine going a month without at least having a the, quick meeting. The, and there is the concern of um, we're going to be doing um, bi weekly dam requisitions. Right. Yeah. Right. Larry large, to be paid. large payments. Yeah. On bi weekly basis. Yeah. So maybe keep it the regular second and fourth and don't change the Well, what do you think on? about June, uh, August 5th? That doesn't, but is it, a, the problem is then, what, but you keep in the August 26th meeting, you just won't be here. Uh, no, 19th. 5th and 19th? 5th and 19th. And 19th. But, th but that doesn't solve the problem of going from the 19th all the way into September. Oh, Jamie was pointing out that it was July, July. and August. Oh, it was yes. July and August. I thought it was yeah. August and September. Okay. I mean, the 5th and 19th would make sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 All right. Moving on then. Reports. Tegan, you still there and do you have a report? I am still here. Hi. 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 So it's been a fairly quiet couple of weeks in the town office, knock on wood. Uh, I've been catching up on some long-term, very slow projects. Um, but two things I just wanted to mention. One is that a number of our laptops and desktops are kind of due for replacement. The one in the vault that researchers use is very slow. The one the Cemetery Commission is using is very slow. A few of them, particularly if you go by the schedule RV Tech has set for us, are due for replacement. I didn't mention it this year because we were really tight on funds for most of the year. Uh, but now that Kari has said that we're, we're feeling a little safer, 
I was planning to get a quote from RB Tech and maybe to replace some of the ones due for replacement. I think there's a number of them now because I don't think they've been replaced for the last couple of years. Um, but I will be bringing you quotes for new, new computers uh, soon. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is because it's been so slow, Barbara has been trying really hard to fill her time, but sometimes she has run out of things to do. And it, it's like, it's blown all our minds in the town office. I gotta tell you, we're all just in shock. Um, <laughs> so the three of us sat down and talked and we decided that it would be fine if she didn't work 40 hours a week or even 30 hours a week for the next probably month or two until things pick up again. She's still a full-time employee. She will still get her benefits because she's still working 35 plus hours a week, nine months of the year. Mm -hmm. um, but she and I are probably gonna take some days off and we'll alternate so the office will still be open the same hours. But we thought that this was the best way to kind of move forward with this and it'll save the town money. She shouldn't be sitting there at the desk. If she's not working, we shouldn't be paying her. She's not working, that kind of thing. Um, and we, we wanted to just let you know and open that up to any feedback you might have on that front. Sounds, sounds like a plan. Does that work for you, Barbara? I think that makes sense. Yeah, I've been, I started almost a month ago and I asked Barney and Tegan if they had any work that I, they could sh shift my way. And it's pretty, work, our work is, we have a real good division of labor within our, all of our jobs, so it's kind of work specific. So I've actually already been reducing my hours for the last month and it's just continued to get slower. Now with Kari here, a lot of what he's doing, I was helping you guys a lot this time last summer and right, the work just isn't there right now. Mm -hmm. So knowing that I do work full time and more for m many more months, if we just annualize my salary mm -hmm. then or my, my schedule, I'm still full time. Mm -hmm. If that's okay with you guys, sure. and I'll just save on payroll for the next, for the summer, basically the months of May, Ju June and July. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is always mm -hmm. historically it's, This has historically time. always been the slowest time, yeah. but in the past, uh, first, last year, Tegan was new. You guys mm -hmm. were all new. We didn't have Kari. And before that, I wasn't full-time. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really ever an issue before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. Great. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Tegan. Uh, I did have one more thing. Uh, another aspect of this conversation is we talked about how Kari is not having a slow time. He's got a lot going on on his plate, and so I mentioned to him that in a lot of offices, the clerk is the assistant treasurer and the assistant treasurer is the assistant clerk to sort of pick up slack when necessary. So he actually walked me through doing payroll this week. Uh, and at some point, he'll probably walk me through doing AP so that if there are times that it works out with all our schedules, I can pick up those tasks because they're fairly straightforward. Wendy has given us very descriptive checklists of how to do them. I feel comfortable that I can pick them up and help do those things so that he can focus on the more immediate tasks uh, that he's been doing for you all. Um, and that's just good to expand our skill set and make sure more people know how to do more things yeah. in the office. That's terrific. Thank you. Wow. So how would do we need to appoint uh, Tegan as uh, assistant, as assistant treasurer. treasurer to make it appropriate for her to be working on those tasks. Well, I was doing some payroll tasks last year before we had a treasurer-ish. Why don't you let us explore that yeah. and see what the, what's required or what's best practice? Yeah, I mean, I love the I idea of cross-training. I think that makes a lot of sense um, for about I mean, a thousand reasons. This, but is all, this is all part of the exploring what's the model that's going to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. term. And when we're, when we're more clear on what that is, then we can make those changes. Great. Thank you. Great. All right. Thanks, Tegan. Kari, do you have any more to report? Um, yeah. So there, um, I think my memo kind of summarizes it. There were two things I wanted to highlight. One was that uh, in, in that memo, there was, uh, I was contacted by the friends of Winooski about the East Calus Dam decommissioning project. And so there were two things. One was they, they're seeking a point of contact from the town, and I'm willing to do it. Um, um, but I wanted, wanted to know if anybody, if 
your interested in But how is the town involved? I mean, we don't own the dam. So why? I think it's informational. I'm not sure exactly. But to that point, they would, they would like to come in and, and present um, to the select board just to make sure, I think, to make sure you're aware of what they're up to. Then, the Friends of the Winooski? Yeah. I see. And they're, and they're su supporting the owner in uh, all the you know, funding and the work that needs to be done. Are you interested in that? You want so, another dam, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> kidding, um, kidding. It's on the wrong side of town. <laughs> should, I, should I invite them? Should we, should we schedule them to come in? I think so. Do I think so. I, mean, yeah. I, I do think it makes sense for us to be peripherally involved, at least knowledgeable yeah. of the process. Yeah. And the Right. I mean, it's going to have a not insignificant impact on the village of East Callis and the people who live right there and, um, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, and then the other one was uh, just late breaking today. Tina and I met <coughs> with um, regional planning commission folks, including Brian Boyd, who was here previously. So he did mention that the two projects in East Callis that they're working on the stormwater runoff projects they have gotten to the point where they are solicited engineering bids. They're going to be hopefully making a decision on their engineer next week, and then they'll start working on their contractor to do the construction of that. So that things are moving along nicely there. But the point of today's meeting was actually about another project that was identified separately for phosphorus control, which is also very much about erosion control, mm -hmm. right? Um, also in East Callis, and in fact, it's on TN's property. And they wanted to know if we were interested in a, it's a gully stabilization project coming right off Marshfield Road. And again, no cost to the town. So we said, yeah, but, you know, oh, sure. we'll take the meeting. Why, and why phosphorus? So there's federal money available for but, keeping phosphor, but, phosphorus out of inflation. I, I, if it's a gully erosion, I'm confused as to why. Because the phosphorus is transported by sediment, sediment. fine sediment. From and if you where? Can stop I from mean, all it, across the landscape. Oh, I thought it tended to come from agricultural fields. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it does tend to, but they did an analysis it's on, it's of on the sediment too. So as things insane. decay and create sediment, it just, it just in fact, they thought this particular site, where you get a lot of bang for your buck in terms of how much phosphorus you could remove on an annual basis compared mm -hmm. to how much it would cost. To so it's, it's not coming change. from my field up there then, where we're manuring the field. <laughs> Well, no. well I, since you brought it up, and, uh, geez, Anne. So. I, I will add, uh, I, I came home early today for the slow time at the office, um, and Andres from CVRPC was, came to my house and was looking at things, and he saw that they've already put in some stone down below the culvert. So he's not sure if maybe part of this project got done and the documentation just isn't there. But then he looked at the culvert under my driveway and thought that that might also be a uh, candidate for this project and said, you might need a bigger culvert to help with mm. things. And I said, if you want to give me a bigger culvert for my driveway, that would be super. Uh, so this may be an evolving project. I'm not quite sure how it's going to shake out. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Just to the point. Okay. Anything else, Kari? No, that's it. Great. Thank you. Anything on uh, the, okay. In that case, um, I'm now formally resigning, <laughs> um, and we need to elect new officers. Would you clarify okay. what you're resigning yeah, from? Yeah. There was community panic about that. I'm resigning from chair. I'm resigning as chair. There was community panic. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I heard some. So it was it was it, it was stated in the agenda, chair. Of the select board, as the people just kind of thought they they were afraid you were resigning from the select. Board. <laughs> well, that's kind. <fine>. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, before we jump in, and I was hoping to get on board when you were doing additional things, and you kind of plowed right through it. But um, I won't go on at length. It's all good with me. But I am also resigning. I have to. I can't afford to do this job. You mean you're resigning I have to from the from the board. Select board. I have to. 
take on additional work so I can support my family and I don't have the time and I apologize for the last couple of months that I have not been as present as I would like to be. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. Yeah. It is what it is, but so sorry to put a pension notification, <laughs> but um, yeah, it is what it is. So uh, effective when I I was planning tonight. I need to. I just don't have the bandwidth. I don't want to be a body that shows up without any kind of being on top of things and, you and don't not being able as, to do my a, projects and my things. It just it's. You don't see it as a temporary situation? I mean, we <laughs> the way the state of Vermont works, no. It's, they're just going to keep jacking everything up until they squeeze every last one of us out of here. So I'd like to get my kids through high school before, you know, I get squeezed out of this state, but it is what it is. So, but I got to look after my people. Right, you do. All right, yeah. well. Um, I, I think it's with great reluctance and sorrow that we would accept your resignation, yeah. but, you. but we'll accept it. <laughs> I guess we have no choice. All right. Well, on top of that, I uh, briefly spoke with Kyrie and Jordan last week. We have come into some new opportunities for work, and I will also be resigning. At the same time? As of Friday. I didn't know he was. I didn't know who you were. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't. So. Wow. I, sorry to do it, but I, I, I have an excellent opportunity and I can't be here. I won't be here. I can't, I can't make more time on the time that I don't have. So I apologize. I've really enjoyed the last six months. Um, you've all actually taught me a lot. I've enjoyed learning from you all, but unfortunately, and we've so and you know valued your input. There's certain things that you know that we don't know, I'd, and we're going to really miss that. I spoke with Jordan for quite some time. I, I believe it was Friday. Yeah. Um, yeah. More than happy to continue to give opinions. I just can't dedicate all my time. Mm -hmm. um, opportunities don't come around along, you know, very often. So when they do, you gotta you gotta run with it, and that's what's best for me and my guys. Yeah, yeah. I understand. So they'll both be missed. Yeah. Thank you for your service. It hasn't been terribly great lately. <laughs> well, well, that you know, I, I, I it's, it's easy to uh, say these things, but I, you know, I think everybody would share that. Like, and I, I genuinely appreciate the perspective and input that you've put in. You put in a lot of work uh, early uh, last year when you assumed mm -hmm. all the responsibilities of road then commissioner. Out. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> and then. And, and, I, you know, uh, so certainly from my mind, uh, there was a proportionate <laughs> need uh, to um, to focus on on your priorities at home over the last few months. I, I don't, yeah. I don't, I certainly understand the the balancing of all of those personal things, and I don't begrudge anybody um, needing to prioritize their their home over yeah. over the extracurriculars of, of volunteering all of the time that we already volunteer uh, on these things and. Um, and you know, to kind of speak to Donnie and I's uh, conversation, I really do appreciate your willingness to continue to be in touch and, and consult on on things, and and hopefully, and I I, I would welcome your your direct input, um, but when whenever you feel like you can or um, or or feel so motivated or passionate to do so, there's there's still a lot of stuff that we are going to be doing in in the town that would that would uh, would appreciate your input on. Um, so. Yes. May I say something? So, Donnie, congratulations. I'm very yeah. happy for you. This is Thank awesome you. that you've got such a great opportunity, Thank and you. I'm thrilled for you, but we're going to miss you. It's been really delightful working with you. And Anne, you. this breaks my heart. I'm sorry that you're going through a difficult time. And last year, you were amazing and awesome, and I remember 
how much, how hard you worked and how many hours, hundreds of hours you put in and that the road crew loved working with you. So we really want to thank you for your year, almost a year and a half of commitment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Rose. I just echo everything that Barbara just said. <clears throat> thank you both so very much, so very much. It's really been delightful getting to know you and have you serve our town. I appreciate it. I also appreciated you. I shared your gravel information at a road meeting last week. Oh. <laughs> they were talking about just cut this much money for this thing next year. And I said, we haven't raised our gravel budget in 20 years. <laughs> uh, well, that makes um, the next thing relatively easy. I <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, uh, I'll take the votes while we can get them. It really takes the opportunity for our Jamie or I to resign I'm, right off the I'm quickly Jesus nominating I'm Jordan to be chair and Jamie to be vice chair. <laughs> One of you, please second. <laughs> I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All, uh, any discussion? Yikes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Congratulations, Jordan. You've inherited a three person board. Yeah. Congratulations Great. on getting the damn damn done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and all. So, sorry. I mean, <laughs> I love so, Larry. one thing that we've all learned from Tegan, this, she's the first town clerk I ever knew this from, was that we're supposed to certify these elections. So, oh, so yeah. now we need to recertify the election of new officers. So if you guys will start, and the three of you sign this. Okay, and we'll Kari, you have a bunch of stuff for us to Oh, my God, I'm going to strike it. Well, don't strike their names off yet, right? This counts as part of the certification. Oh, actually, Donnie's still on. You're both still on. They're both still on. Until, until you adjourned, right. and Donnie's still on until Friday, you said. So, you know what, keep all five of you, all five of you signed up. Please. Well, plus, Kari's got some things to sign. I think that's the end of our business, right? So, um, executive session. No. No executive no. session, and I'm going to well, just. Do, do you want to discuss a process for um, right. soliciting new board members? Yeah. Oh. We should. Well, we advertise. Same, yeah, do you same want way us to we just run the same ad we did six months ago or whatever that was? I think so, when we, when we found Donnie. Yeah. Caught my eye. Um, yeah, I mean, that yeah. process worked really well. I would think yeah. we'd repeat it. Actually, we have a, one of the other applicants right here. That's <laughs> true. Oh, but she wouldn't see that. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. We had another one sitting right here. Yeah. That's right, we did. We did. He's got some work to do first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> With a three-person board in the interim, what does that do to quorum and open meeting law? I think all three of you need to be here. To, to have oh, my goodness. <laughs> but two of us can here. still meet and not be a quorum. Yeah, we just can't take any action. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But Sorry to put you in the pickle. I don't, I don't think relative to the decisions in the next couple of weeks, it's much. We'll be okay for a while. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so so should we make the due date for expressions of interest like the next select board meeting or the day before the next select board meeting? Uh, that fast? I think, I, I think it would, well, so I'm going to be, I, I should be able to attend remotely for the last one in June. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to be traveling uh, for the June 20, 20 Oh, this is a problem. The 10th so, and 24th. Right. Yeah, so the, the 10th is obviously fine. I'm, I'm here. But the 24th, I'll be uh, on, on the road, so I won't be present. Uh, I can zoom in. Yes, but I'm going to be in the mountains. I won't right. be able to zoom in. So we can either cancel the meeting unless we need to do anything specifically on the 26th or the 24th or or just table actions to be ratified uh, the yeah. following meeting. Yeah, you could do that. Are we sure with a, 
the quorum stays three with a two vacancies. Yes, I'm pretty sure. Too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 This, this, because like he's we need to move fairly quickly. Though. It we does. Do. It does. Um, yeah. I will not be here on in person on the tenth, but I will be on Zoom. Okay. And, and, and oh, sorry, remind me your dates again. I will be here on the tenth, okay. but on the seventh, on the twenty fourth, I can't even be here on Zoom. Yes, yeah, so I, I guess. <clears throat> Realistically, I mean, we're, we're not even going to be able to make a decision or appointments um, until uh, until the beginning of July, anyway. Um, so we'll be able to receive applications, but we're not going to be able to make decisions on any of them because we won't have a quorum for either of the June meetings. We'll have a quorum for the tenth. She's on. She'll I'll be, be on the Zoom. Zoom. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I guess technically that'll work. Yeah. We just have to take a roll call. If we could get some for, applicants um, by then, we could do it. Would yeah. timing wise make more sense to move the meeting on the twenty fourth to the seventeenth? Uh, I. Or are you already gone then? Wait. Are we in June? Or June. Yeah, June. I. You're gone. I am gone, and I can't zoom in. Yeah. And also, we went through a process of meeting with applicants um, so I think it's going to be hard to make, even make a decision right. by June 10th because that's assuming that we're going to have the ability to meet with somebody. I, I would, or if we try to schedule interviews for you know prior to the, the June 10th select board. That's just next week though. I doubt that's right? we're going to get applicants right. that right. fast. I mean we could if we get applicants we could you know, schedule like interviews at right? right at five and five thirty that yeah. night or yeah, something. something. Yeah, you could actually make a decision that night. Right. <laughs> Billy, <Pilling> sit down. <laughs> if you're assuming we're going to get applicants, but maybe we will. Oh, we will. I mean, we should at least if, try. If we don't, we don't. We try again. But. We got applicants <clears throat> last time. We got two or three. Three. Three, three. applicants last time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to be. You're gone two weeks. I am. I mean, it's it's tricky to not be able to make. Well, I mean, it, I mean, if it's, if staff and you guys interview, right? I, I'm sure I'll ratify when I get back. Right. If you guys make a decision. I mean, we'd be better off if we could appoint at least one person all the time. Right. I think that should be a goal. We might not make it, like you said. We might not get any applicants by then. But we should have a rough goal of doing an interview or two before the meeting on the 10th. Yeah, if and if we get a can an uh, or just do them do them before the meeting. Right. Yeah. You know. At five or something. So yeah. Same then. <laughs> yeah. So we'll advertise yeah. it tomorrow, and we'll make the the due date the the ninth. Yeah. Right. right, the seventh. Yeah. Okay. Next week's really so, sexy for me, but I'll do it next week. Make the due date a little bit earlier yeah. so that select board members have a chance to review, review and think about their yeah. application and their statement of interest, and and if, if we have to extend it, be quite a few days. Yeah. Okay, uh, meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.